it's now 160,032 miles on our vehicle. This morning we have just received this service engine soon light on the dash cluster. This is letting us know that there is a problem with the engine or the transmission. The computer is letting us know this information. So we have to now connect our diagnostic scan tool to retrieve the information from this service engine soon light. Here I have my scan tool connected and we can see the first code is P0430 catalytic system efficiency threshold below and that's in bank 2 that will be on the left side of the engine. So let's go to the next one. Okay. Okay, so this is our freeze frame data of when this code actually happened. So I'm going to have to look over these data which is going to help me solve which is going to help me solve this problem. So let's take a look at code number 2. And that's P0328 knock sensor 1 circuit high input bank 1. So this is telling us that the right side bank of cylinder is creating a knock or a false knock. This we're going to take a look at in another video. So now the scan tool is asking me for more information. What it's basically looking for, it wants the accurate manufacturer. This way it's able to diagnose the code much easier. So here we have code P1456, and this is the EVAP system's very small leak, and it's showing us it's about two tenths of an inch leak, which means this could be somewhere along the hose, or maybe there's a cracked plastic somewhere that's causing this leak. So we have to go and check the EVAP system. This is the code that we're going to address in this video. We're going to try to fix this code. The other codes we're going to leave for another video. And this is the left side catalytic converter need to be replaced. We know the catalytic converter need to be replaced because we have service its oxygen sensor and we're still receiving this code. So the computer is telling us that the catalytic converter needs to be replaced because it's not able to perform transferring the gas from toxic gas to non-toxic gas. This we're going to explain at another time. So and we're back to our original screen. So this is a knock sensor and this is going to have to be along the EGR system. There's also a video description link below that you could click on to see how to replace the knock sensor. But I don't recommend that you replace the knock sensor because a knock sensor is something that's designed to last for 1 million mile. The reason why we, you're going to see in the video what we're doing is we're basically replacing all the gasket to fix any vacuum leak which is what we're experiencing in this situation since we have this evap code this evap code is leaking fresh air into the manifold system and i believe it could be the cause of this knock sensor code because i never had this code before this code only came up at 160,000 miles 32 miles above that so let's take a look at where the leak is on the EVAP system. Okay, now we want to bring ourselves outside of the vehicle next to the gas filler neck. And what we want to take a look at is this gas cap. You always want to check your gas cap, make sure it's closed and it's tight. If it is so, most likely the gas cap itself fail. And what really happens with these gas caps to make them fail is when you look down here you'll see a rubber gasket so this rubber gasket will lose its ability to seal against this neck once that happens you will get that same leak as the trouble code is specifying you must also remember this gas cap is specially designed 
to draw air into the tank and do not let any air out of the tank so this valve in the center of the gas cap is a spring control diaphragm that allow air to flow into the gas tank and prevents air from seeping out or leaking out of the gas tank in this area so every time you install your gas cap you want to make sure it clicks like that that will ensure that it's sealed here is a replacement gasoline filler cap and this is an aftermarket so what I did is I removed this old gasket from the Nissan factory gas cap and I place it on this gas cap so this one here as you can see when you get a closer look it's been used so we must now move to other tests on the evap system to check for a leak all of the vehicle gasoline filler neck gas cap provide continuous flow into the gas tank when the vehicle is being driven only and not at idle the system must continuously flow air into the gas tank so the evap system could purge that air into the intake manifold system with careful inspection along the evap system hose we were able to find this split or this crack inside the hose that leads to the evap pressure sensor that is the barometric pressure sensor that will tell the ECM the pressure inside of the fuel tank so we are now going to replace this hose and this is the solution for code P1456 the barometric pressure sensor is located at the right rear of the chassis this is the sensor with its bracket bolted to the frame it is not far located from the filler neck so I could detach this barometric pressure sensor which is the evap pressure sensor from this bracket which is connected to the frame rail but I find it's easier to detach it by this 10 millimeter bolt the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you just apply some CRC lube to the bolts the hose fitting and also to the harness plug this is going to ensure easy disconnection of the component now I simply want to take a 10 millimeter socket so we just want to release this 10 millimeter bowl okay so you're gonna have a bowl that extend from here to China because if you ask me this is the bolt is way too long for the sensor and a piece of sheet metal now that we have the sensor unbolted we're going to take our needle nose pliers we just want to grab the clamp from the back this is going to be much easier for you to do since So we have to be careful when we're disconnecting this sensor because it's plastic and you can see right here there's a tab that has to be pushed in and then we can pull the sensor away so you never want to hold the harness and the sensor to pull like this because you could disconnect the wire from between the plug and if you damage a plug that's going to give you a poor connection and your problem is going to exist 
So what we want to do now is we just want to saturate this plug with oil because there's sand and dirt and debris in between the pin. I'm going to take this needle nose and try to grab it, squeeze it. So this is going to be a very complicated part, but we're going to leave this, let it sit, let it soak, because our main goal here is to get this hose off. So I just want to turn this so I can gain access to the tab on the clamps. So you can see how this hose is damaged. I just hope the camera don't fall. Now when we're going to disconnect this, we have a plastic here, you have to be careful with this because this plastic could also break. So that is our leak and what someone tried to do here is when they broke it, they tried to put some glue in here. I'm assuming this is the body shop guy must have done this because when they removed the tray from the vehicle, they must have broke this hose. But this hose seems to have an inner hose with it. So I just want to remove this, this glue. So this hose has an inner hose, so it's not really the leak, it's not coming from here. But I'm going to replace this hose and then we're going to take for another test drive and see what happens. Okay, now it's time for us to remove the sensor. And what you're going to have to do most of the time is you're going to have to take your tool and just impact on this socket. What we're doing here is we're knocking all the sand and loose dirt inside the socket so we can be able to press this tab in and pull the plug out. You can see the, all the dirt and sand that build up around the sensor. So we did not get any contamination in the sensor. That's good. That means the pin and the connection is still in supreme connection. So we're gonna wash this down with some brake cleaner before we connect it. Now that I have this sensor removed, I want to go and take a test, an electronic test, to see if it's in performing condition. we could provide a replacement hose we want to inspect the old hose and what we want to look at is the outside diameter and the inside diameter we also want to use, look at the thickness of the wall inside of the hose so this is a replacement that I was able to get it's a synthetic hose and what you have noticed I've done here is I've placed some sockets in the end this socket is going to allow easy installation of the hose when it's to be fitted to the plastic connection so this is the socket you will simply use some lube we'll place some lube in here then you will just place the socket back in and we will leave the socket in there so the hose can expand at the end so when it comes time to installing this EVAP pressure sensor, it will be easier to slip into location. If we do not set these holes, then most of the time when you're trying to fit the holes onto this plastic spout, it's gonna break this spout. So it's always best to prepare the hose before you're gonna make your installation. Because remember, you're gonna be in a tight spot trying to fit this hose onto the sensor and its line. Now it's time for us to install our EVAP pressure sensor. And what I want to do is I want to wash this socket out. I want to make sure I get all that dirt out of there. And I also want to make sure the spout that we're going to make our hose connection is absolutely oil free. So to make our diagnostic to figure out why this hose became broken, 
is because when we look at the alignment of the spout on the sensor to its line, you can see it's offset. And this happened when the body man installed this board, this two by four to support the tray. They push this bracket forward. So what we must do is we have to shift this bracket a little to the rear so the alignment with the map sensor and its line is properly. Now that we have properly positioned the map sensor, the EVAP pressure sensor bracket, we can see the alignment with the sensor and the line is perfect. Now we could make our installation. Now would be a best time to apply some weather stripping glue to this spout so the hose can be installed. But since we do not have any weather stripping glue, we're simply gonna lube this spout and the inside of the hose. So basically we have a tightly fitted hose that's why we're not going to use the weather stripping glue, but it's always safe to do so. Now it's time for us to place some dielectric grease inside the socket harness and the sensor. This will ensure waterproofing ability so water does not damage the pin. But what I'm doing here is I'm simply putting some lube because we cannot find the dielectric grease. Now I just want to place the sensor up here but before I place the sensor in position I'm going to place some more lube on the sensor spout inside the hose so you can see how tight this hose is to fit can you imagine how tight it will be if we did not provide the socket to set it in position so you always have to find easy way for your installation So this is a 10 millimeter six point socket. Normally people would like to use a 10 millimeter 12 point socket, but a 12 point socket will have the ability to strip any nut and bolt that it's gonna be removing. So that's why I highly recommend that we use a 10 millimeter six point socket. So that's what I'm talking about. It has to have six points instead of 12. So this is complete our installation of the EVAP pressure sensor, also known as the barometric pressure sensor. So we have basically fixed our two tenths of an inch leak into the EVAP system. And anytime you have a leak in the EVAP system, you wanna look at all the lines. There is a specific way for testing the EVAP line for leaks and that is something you can do at the EVAP service port in the engine compartment. This we're going to do in another video but since we were visually